This video is sponsored by Milanote. Previously on AG TV, we made over Alessandra's bedroom. Here with the crew. <laughs> <laughs> it's technically considered a junior one bedroom here in Toronto. It's very cool. Thank you so much. This is really like the hero piece of the entire space. <laughs> this is supposed to be like a beautiful B-roll moment. <laughs> Graham thrifted two sets of doors. Added cane webbing to the top. Wow, we literally built a light. What the heck? I'm like a bad DIY queen. All of these work. Oh my god, guys! <laughs> I can't believe I get to live here. Today, we're tackling her kitchenette. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and I'm really excited about today's kitchen makeover because I'm making over a kitchenette, a space I have never tackled before. If you're unfamiliar with a kitchenette, it's basically a very small kitchen, like a micro kitchen. These are very popular in Europe and big cities like New York. They don't have a traditional kind of oven stove situation and you're working with limited counter space, limited storage, so basically I'm working with a challenge. <laughs> Before we get started, I would love it if you guys considered subscribing to this channel. My goal this year is to hit 500,000 subscribers. I know we can do it. We do makeovers like this almost every single week on this channel. The majority of people who come back to this channel are not yet subscribed. So if that is you, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it. Do it. Hey guys, so we are at Alessandra's. We're scouting her kitchenette and I wanted to walk you through and we're also gonna bring her up here. She's downstairs, but we're gonna bring her in here to ask her like what's working, what's not working. She just moved in, so I feel like she will have some wants for this space and we'll talk to her about those. Um, but let me just walk you through the space. Cute little dining table area. I love these chairs. I think she thrifted these and then reupholstered the seats. We love a thrifty queen. I'm thinking we could shift the table and the chairs over a bit and kind of keep this as an accent wall. So I'm thinking paint, shelves. Graham has an idea to build some shelving for the induction burner and the toaster oven and move it along this wall here. And then we could decorate it with like jars for dry goods, things like that. We are also gonna be painting all of these cabinets. And I feel like moving this over here is gonna give her lots more prep space. I wanna do something different for the backsplash, so I'm thinking we can actually use real tile. Tile, basically a board that fits right against this wall, and that way we can add real ceramic tile but make it renter friendly so that when she leaves, she just needs to take out like four screws and that panel of wood will come right off the wall. We've never done anything like this. So I think it's gonna be fun to change it up. And there's so many more options when it comes to like real ceramic tile that are fun and colorful and patterned. Those are my preliminary ideas. I'm gonna bring up Alessandra and start measuring the space and just like chat to her about what she what she needs. Okay, so to look around your kitchen, I actually think it's quite functional. It's small, but it works. It works for me. Yeah. Okay, I'd love to hear that. Can you tell me what's not working for you? Storage. Yeah. I come from a big Italian family and I keep <laughs> approximately two boxes of pasta in my cupboard. <laughs> so I would love like a little bit more. Some of the wood fixtures in here are a little worse for wear. The platform supporting my cooktop and then also the like wood right beside my sink. I don't know if there's space for like a prep area, but I would love that. There's a box up there of kitchen supplies that were left by my landlord for any tenants, but I don't want them. Okay. Um, but I do have to keep them in the unit for storage. Okay, cool. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> When I design a space, I always start with a mood board and you guys always ask me what program I use. I use Milanote and it just makes the process so much easier to plan and design beautiful spaces. Milanote is a project management tool for creatives and it allows you to organize every element of your project in a very creative and flexible way. In addition to the mood boards, I use Milanote to organize notes, before photos, measurements to gram for DIYs. It's so great because it just means that every Everything is in one place for my whole team to reference throughout the makeover process. 
My team and I can also leave notes for each other, so as we're planning the space, any questions they have, they can just ask directly in the board and I can answer them. One of my favorite parts of Milanote is that I can add products and Pinterest photos directly into my Milanote board. So when I'm surfing the web, if I see something that I love, I just need to hit the button and the product or the image goes into any mood board that I want it to. Another feature that I love is that Milanote has a color palette tool that will give you actual paint colors that match the rest of your mood board. So you can swatch different colors, get a combo that you like, and be able to just shop the paint directly at the hardware store with the color codes. The best part is that Milanote is free. So if you are looking for the perfect makeover planning tool, I would highly suggest using Milanote. I have linked Milanote's website in my description box where you can sign up for a free account. So I knew I wanted to add in a real ceramic tile backsplash, but I wanted to do it renter friendly, obviously. Because Alessandra doesn't have an existing backsplash in her kitchen, peel and stick tile would have just pulled off the drywall when it was removed. It wouldn't have been renter friendly. And I also wanted to do something different. So when we were scouting, I said to Graham, I was like, would it be possible to install some kind of wooden panel and then tile on top of that panel and then be able to just take the panel down when Alessandra moves? And because it's Graham, he was like, yeah, sure, no problem. This hack that we have coming for you guys later on in this video is gonna blow your mind but yes, we are using real ceramic tile in this space. Because we just made over her bedroom, I really wanna riff off the colors we used in that space. Bold pops of primary colors, pull the blue out of the headboard and bring that into the kitchenette somehow. Pops of red, I'm thinking this beautiful red garbage can, some red crates for extra storage. And then on the wall beside Alessandra's dining table, I wanna create a little open pantry with some cute clear jars. These beautiful shelves from Croft, an amazing small business from Toronto that makes everything from scratch. It's all handmade products. I also wanna move Alessandra's toaster oven onto this wall just to give her a little bit more space, so I'm gonna enlist Graham to do a custom shelf. Just really simple brackets, piece of wood, painted the same color as the accent wall. I also want to give Alessandra a better solution for an induction burner. I'm thinking maybe when we replace that countertop that's falling apart, Graham can maybe come up with a cool DIY solution to have her induction burner like sitting in the countertop, just not like out in the open right beside the bathroom on a piece of wood that is probably gonna fall off the wall. You know? Alessandra's style is so fun to work with. It's like quirky and she loves like shapes, bold pops of color. So that's kind of what I'm gonna try and bring into the space. Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday, bright and early, and we have arrived at Alessandra's for our prep day. There's so much to do. <laughs> There's so much to do. So the cabinet doors have been taken off because we are repainting them. They're very dark right now. They're in need of some love. So Graham is taking them to his workshop and he's spraying them professionally. I have painted cabinets myself all the ways you could imagine. With a paintbrush, don't wanna do that. With a roller, better. With a spray gun, even better. So the fact that I have Graham that can just like do this offsite, make them look as sleek as possible is like the best. You wanna make sure you are prepping your cabinets with a degreaser, sand them down, you want to prime them, and then preferably you want to spray them with a spray gun or use a foam roller. So he is painting them just a clean white. I wanted something crisp that just felt like new and I wanted to really brighten up this kitchen so white cabinets will do that for sure. Elena and I are gonna start on this wall. We are going to paint it a fun color. You may notice that Alessandra's apartment has tons of Toronto charm and I thought this would be a good opportunity just to say to all of you, don't get discouraged by uneven walls, cracks in the walls, holes in the walls. This is so common when you move into a rental. You just kind of have to like work with it. You know, you have to like embrace the quirk, embrace the charm. Nothing in rentals like this is ever going to look or feel perfect. I kind of love that personally. Like I love apartments with more charm. I think it adds character to a space. You just have to work around the quirks basically. Okay, so that's straight. Yeah. I think I mentioned in Alessandra's bedroom video that this house is literally on a slant. The issue is here, because we're painting this accent wall a bold color, any imperfection is gonna show because the rest of the space is white. So we've taped it off and as I'm taping it, there's it like goes up and then it goes down and it's just, it's not perfect. Like look how wonky it is up there. So wonky. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the crisp line trick where we go in with white paint, paint all around the edges of the tape just to make it crispy. So when we pull back the tape, everything will be straight, neat, tidy. Let's do it. Yeah. This is a sick color. Yeah. Robin egg blue. Oh. oh. This color. Yeah. Is wow. Wowza. This accent wall is white blue by Benjamin Moore. Probably one of my new faves, I have to say. It has undertones of gray and green in it. I just love how there's a few tones of blue kind of throughout Alessandra's space. It's really fun to kind of connect all the spaces together. I'm so glad that I did the crisp white line trick because look. Like, come on. Yeah. So now it is on to tiling. We are professional tilers today, slightly nervous, but also really excited that this hack, if it works, is going to be a complete renter friendly change. So the first thing we're doing is removing that counter piece before we start tiling. It needed to go, so we're taking that off the cabinet and just starting fresh. It's not even screwed back there. Yeah. Oh my God. Bye bye. Bye bye. So we are putting three pieces of OSB board on this wall. OSB is a really affordable wood, and this is gonna be the base that we're gonna tile on, but we're gonna screw it to the wall first. So we have three panels of it, cut to size of each of the three walls along the backsplash, and we're installing it with some screws. The panel is up. I'm gonna start arranging the tiles on the floor to get the configuration that I'm thinking, and then we're gonna get them on the wall. Okay, so we've got two options, perfect circle or arches, semicircles. I think the semicircle is the way to go. Motif, we're talking motifs now. <laughs> So you're probably wondering, okay, but if the tile goes over the screws, how are you gonna access the panel when it's time to move out? Friends, this is where it becomes really fun. So I'm drilling a hole into the tile with a masonry drill bit where the screw lives in the panel. That's clean, wow. <laughs> That's so fast. We're gonna take this screw out and then we're gonna put the adhesive on the back of the tile, tile it as normal. And then we're going to take that screw and screw it in here. The screw will go through the panel. And then, so you can't see the hole, we're gonna use these little plugs. So then when Alexandra leaves, all she needs to do is take up the plug, undo the screw, and then the panel will just come off the wall. It's brilliant, really. Brilliante. I also thought that she could maybe use it as like a flat leg, you know? She's behind the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like that. it doesn't go to waste. She can use this as a flat leg, a backdrop. There's a lot of different uses she could have for this panel once it comes off the wall. Though I feel like she should never take these tiles off the wall personally. But if her landlord ever questioned her about it, she'd be like, no, it's literally a panel screwed into the wall, totally render friendly. So to actually put these tiles on the panel, I'm just using an adhesive, the same adhesive you would use if you were tiling just on drywall. But we're just doing one tile at a time. Yeah, got it. <laughs> we started doing here. It's going great. It's going really great. I've definitely you, Yeah, you look like you're really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. yep. There we go. Yup. Of course, you have the movement down like perfectly, precisely. It's like spreading cream cheese. When you put the tile down, just shift it slightly, like a half inch to either side, just to like spread the adhesive behind it. And then, piece of response. Oh yeah. That's so sick. High five! <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I didn't like that. Well done. We are putting one tile, putting spacers, adding another tile. It's a very like meditative process. You guys, if I can tile, you can too. 
You definitely want to make sure you are using spacers when you tile. This is going to keep all the grout lines really even and keep your tiles sturdy on the wall as they dry. I love this pattern that I've chosen to configure these tiles into. Really mimics the headboard. They're like little blue arches, like Alessandra's bedroom. And the cool thing about these tiles is you can do them in so many different patterns and just have fun with it. These beautiful tiles are from the Riyadh Tile, the same company that I got my kitchen tiles from. Fun fact, if you're from Canada and have been wanting to get your hands on the tiles that I have in my kitchen, they're now available here in Canada. All the info will be linked down below. Yellow glasses are kind of in right now. <laughs> it's true. GH approved? Yeah. Approved. So what you're saying is you think I look stylish? Yeah. Okay. Also making cuts is way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I just went outside, used this tile cutter. This cost $30, this tile cutter. Really affordable and I was terrified to use it and then I got into like a good flow and I was like, wow, this is so cool, I'm cutting tile. I feel like these things often seem so intimidating at first but once you do them once, you're like, I can totally do this. I can cut tile, I can put backsplash up, no problem. Oh, it looks professionally done. That was really fun. I could do that again. Do it again. A good tip if you are using ceramic tiles or even peel and stick tiles, carry them behind your fridge so it looks like that area has also been tiled as well. Graham. <laughs> what? Just gotta get that. That glass of water in. <laughs> we don't drink enough water on set, and then Graham. Graham starts drinking from the pot. He has been outside. <laughs> I feel like this great. is enough primer content. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I always say this, but that was a long but successful prep day. I'm gonna show you where we're at. So the backsplash is up, it looks incredible. We need to grout it and wash all the dust off of it from when the tiles were cut. We also primed the cabinets, we did the accent wall, we actually did quite a lot. Okay, I'm signing off and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, hey guys, so next day, what are we doing first? We're grouting, right Greg? Yeah, we're gonna grab it. The tiles look so good. Look very spiffy. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's grout. <laughs> we waited until day two to grout, which is what you want to do. You want to make sure the adhesive behind your tiles has dried. You want to give it at least like overnight to dry. Oh, that is real satisfying. Grouting is very similar to spackling a hole. You just want to fill in the grout lines with the grout and then you want to go in with a sponge, a clean sponge with lots of water and wipe off the grout. Try doing it in sections so that you grout, you clean, you grout, you clean, so that the grout isn't sitting on top of the tiles for too long. I found it much easier to do this with two people. I was grouting in between the tiles and then Graham was going in and wiping all the grout off with a wet sponge. Wiping grout off is tedious. You have to have a sponge, you have to wring out your sponge, you have to make sure it's clean. It's a very repetitive process, but obviously worth it and you have to grout in between your tiles. That's what protects them. And it also just like really finishes it off nicely. We got pre-mixed grout. It's really easy to work with and I would highly suggest pre-mixed grout if you are a beginner like me. Peel and stick backsplash, peel and stick floor tiles. And peel and stick products are, <laughs> I think I'm really, Sorry, you give it away? No, you're no. good. Boom. Boom, boom. So we learned something today about tiling. <laughs> I was like, after we grouted, we realized that it was leaving this like hazy film on the tiles. You're always gonna get that when you grout, which is why you need a wet sponge to clean it, but the haze is staying. <laughs> So what we realized is that these tiles are unsealed. They're really porous, so they kind of took in all the grout and the grout has basically stained the top of them. I would say first you want to seal the tiles before you grout. But also if this happens to you and you haven't sealed the tiles, we just picked up a cement and 
grout remover. And it basically takes off the haze of the tiles and it seems to be working. So we're just gonna go with it. They're like matte, they're not yeah. glossy. So therefore we should have realized that they weren't sealed. Yeah, if you have like matte tiles, you should totally seal them first or this will happen. Yeah. But they still are gonna look rustic just by nature. They're cement tiles that have been hand painted, I think. For now, we're gonna move on to changing the light. This pendant light was way too low. We kept bashing our head on it. So doing more of a ceiling sponge is gonna be decorative. I feel like people think that ceiling sponsors just have to be like boob lights or just kind of like ugly fixtures that you find in rentals, but you can find cute ones like this. I got this from Target. If you are from Canada, I have a whole reel that explains how to get Target in Canada. I will link my Instagram handle right here. If you're like, how are you ordering Target from Canada? Don't worry, I got you. Like, where does that <laughs> hole go to is what I want to know. It goes to the dark side. Whoa. Yeah. This light was way bigger than we thought it was gonna be, which I think was such a happy accident. It really fills the space. And it was under $100. We got it on sale. It was 80 live reporting from Milana across the room. If that medallion wasn't there, that would look a lot better. But the medallion is there. Yeah, it's been there for you know? 200 years. Yeah. It's been there for 200 years. And no, I love it. Rentals, you know? So while Graham finishes scrubbing the tiles, Panda Graham scrubbing the tiles. Okay, I, well, I'll stop. No, I was just, you're supposed oh, to keep scrubbing. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> I am going to paint this shelf so it matches this wall color. So we're actually doing shelves, floating shelves, all over this wall. But this one specifically is for the toaster oven. So if you remember, Alessandra had her toaster oven on the countertop and it was taking up so much space. She had limited prep space. So we wanted to move it over here, kind of out of sight, out of mind, but still really accessible. So it kind of blends in with the rest of the wall. Now I need to paint the outside of the cabinets and I'm painting it obviously in the same white that we're painting the cabinet doors. One of the easiest things you can do to upgrade your rental kitchen or kitchenette is to change out the faucet. I feel like a lot of people don't think about this, but wait until you see this new faucet we have from Delta. So not only does this have a pull down faucet, so it makes it easy to clean her sink. Are you guys ready? She can turn it off by tapping it and turn it on by tapping it. I could do this all day. Alessandra is a really big cooker, so. Cooker. A big cooker. <laughs> Alessandra is a big cooker. <laughs> Doesn't she also Sorry, like doing dishes? Yeah, she likes to have a clean space. Just tell the camera she's a Virgo, they'll get it. <laughs> okay, can we back this part up? Sorry, don't look at me. I have to. Don't look at me, okay. Sometimes it's the smallest upgrades like this that can just add so much function into a space and it's like a really easy upgrade. <sighs> that is so fun. Really excited about this wall because we're turning it into kind of like an open pantry, a storage space, making use of vertical wall space, which I always say is key in a small space. So we're gonna start with this shelf and this is gonna hold the toaster oven that was over on the counter. And then we have these beautiful shelves from Cross Design. These shelves come with leather straps and they're gonna hang all around the wall. Wait, I just thought of something. It can't go there because her table's here, which is why we had always said that it was gonna go on the right. Is there a way to like kind of Scoot? No. no, I think it's just gonna be annoying for her to get. But she could access the toaster oven without leaving her seat. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I love that energy, but unless we move it here, yeah. Yeah. so it's not on the counter. Pitch us. You're right, that's not good. I know it's not gonna work, but I'm <laughs> entertaining it. Yeah. First of all, the fridge needs to open. You're sitting right beside the toaster oven. This should be over here. Thank you. That's what I said. Oh, okay, I'm behind the wall, but I agree with you. It should be over this way. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh. No. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, so it has to be like here. This is great. Very functional. Okay, now Alana and I can figure out the height of these other shelves. Higher, I think for sure. So cute. 
No, there's something wrong there. That's not that's not right. That's level. That's level? Very level. But it looks way off. Now it's time to install the countertop that Graham DIY'd. So to make a space for the induction burner, he measured the burner, cut a hole, he sealed the whole countertop with a glossy shellac finish so that Alessandra can easily clean it. And we also made the countertop a little longer so that she had a little extra prep space beside the burner. So Graham put in a couple of like support beams to hold up the induction burner. It looks like it always belonged right here. And the plug is gonna go behind the fridge and we're gonna plug it in. So now suddenly I feel like Alessandra feels more like she has a stove top. Also, this piece of wood is from the same herringbone wood that we used in Jen's apartment. So we're just like reusing like crazy. Graham even repurposed the offcut that came from cutting the hole in the countertop. And he has made that into a little cutting board for Alessandra. So good, so good. Now I'm installing a new kitchen rail. Alessandra had one installed before, but it was kind of sagging. We just needed a new one, but I wanted to keep the accessories she had on it, this really cool floating drying rack, and she has other accessories that she can add on. I just wanted to reuse things that she already had. Of course, maximizing the prep space, we took away that drop leaf table that had the induction burner on top. Like I said, it was like holding onto the wall for dear life. So we wanted to DIY a new one for Alessandra. This is gonna blow your mind. Graham actually made a herringbone pattern using the closet doors that we thrifted for Alessandra's bedroom. Yeah, so Graham had taken the little panels out of the top of the closet so we could use cane webbing instead, kept these pieces, like I said, hashtag thrifty queen, and made a herringbone pattern on this drop leaf. Is that insane or what? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. When he told me that, I was like, what? In a small space like this, drop leaf panels or tables are always the way to go because you can fold them down when they're not in use and save space. That's pretty That's sturdy. sturdy. Do we just come up with like a genius solution to this? We were gonna have to drill the latch piece into this metal countertop, which I didn't really wanna do, but after I installed it, I just opened it and it sits so nicely on top of the counter and it's so sturdy. Graham and I were a little bit worried about it being able to hold a lot of weight, but this way, the countertop supports it and she has an awesome prep area that's like super sturdy and she just unlatches it pops it down. We didn't use this product in this makeover, but I did find these really cool L brackets on Amazon that fold down. So you can create a Murphy table really easily. You don't have to like make brackets yourself at home. I'll link those down below because I think they're a really, a really good find. Next, I'm going to replace the cardboard box up there with these cute little crates. They're red, which I feel like is gonna look so good against the blue tile. And these are really cute. You can also stack them on top of each other too. If you are living in a small space and trying to add organization and storage, look for areas around your apartment where you can put even more storage. So really make use of like your floor to ceiling. We're like nearing the end of the day. It's very late. Poor Alessandra is stranded at the office. She can't come home until we're done. And Graham is like, you know what? Um, we need to switch the refrigerator door. And I was like, we do, we, we do. So now Alessandra can just like easily access the fridge. It opens up towards the kitchen. You can make this switch on all fridges. All the doors can be switched to either side. Wow. Sometimes it's the simplest changes like this that, like I was saying, like functionally change your life, change your everyday life. Everyone needs a gram in their life to do this kind of thing. I feel like Alessandra's gonna love this. It's gonna be like the change that she's super excited about. So good. Now we are popping on the kitchen cabinets. They just look so good. They look fresh and clean and new. Sometimes a little bit of paint goes really far to making your space feel brand new. Of course, knobs, one of my favorite ways to just like give a piece of furniture a facelift. I'm mixing and matching here. I'm doing a couple curved knobs on the top. And then for the drawers, we're going with these small gold hex knobs. Also mixing and matching metals. Who am I? I know, but I think it works. It's like very eclectic and cool in here, you know? 
Now it is time for the finishing touches. One thing I love to do in kitchens, especially if you have limited storage, is to put dried goods in jars and make a decorative moment out of it, whether that's on a countertop or a floating shelf. So we have these jars from Ikea, a little pop of color. So now Alessandra has a little mini pantry situation going on. This paper towel holder slides onto the bottom of a cabinet or a shelf. Little organizational touches like this, again, are so great for making use of underused space. These magnetic spice containers, so great if you have, again, like limited storage, but have a large spice collection you like to cook. These just magnetically, these just, these ma magnetize? These are magnets. They stick to your fridge. They magnetized your fridge? No. They're magnetic. These are magnetic, so they just stick, stick on your the, fridge? <laughs> they stick to the fridge. Stick to the fridge. Yeah, like magnets do. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. They just stick to your fridge. Very cool decorative moment going on in this fridge. Next, I am actually using a planter as a place to corral utensils. Such a fun little decorative touch and has a lot of space for all of Alessandra's cooking utensils. I wouldn't know, I don't cook, so like I have a lot of utensils, but like you want a lot of utensils. So now they're all in a cute little spot on the counter. I'm placing the cutting board that Graham DIY'd, ties into all of the little herringbone touches on the countertops. This gorgeous red garbage can in the corner here. Everything in a small space counts, even your garbage can, and it can be cute. This gorgeous runner is going in front of the sink area to add warmth and texture. Love a good home sense find like this. This cute step stool from Neat Space in Toronto, a great organizing store here in the city. It's the same step stool as the one in the office, super cute, but in this matte black color. Also, shout out to Maya from Neat Space who hand delivered this stool to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Maya. Finally, we're placing her table and her chairs that she already had. They like seamlessly fit in here with the rest of the decor. We literally transformed a little kitchenette into like the quirkiest, cutest little dream ever. I mean, I'm biased, but personally, I, I think it's pretty cute. <laughs> okay, it's time to bring Alessandra in to reveal the space. You know the drill. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I want you to picture what your space looked like before. Um, it was pretty dark, kind of cluttered, yeah. not a lot of storage, and I feel like wasted space too. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh my god. Not the same place. It's really not, right? The tile, it's little arches. That's yeah. so cute. Yeah. My yeah. my burner fits in yeah. the counter. Did Graham build this? Graham sure did. It's yeah. so gorgeous. These also used to be in the treehouse, which I feel like is kind of special. That you know? makes me so happy. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, the light. Oh my god, there's so much to look at. Look, you're, you're missing this wall too. Oh I'm like in awe of you guys again. Aww, Yay. Thank you so much, You're welcome. guys. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. You Woo. guys did an amazing job. Great job, guys. Thanks again to Milanote for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you sign up for a free account using the link in my description box below. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, Atlanta, just so you know, I can you can see Atlanta. <laughs> See Alana, you can see Alana. See Alana.